We uh, tried as a program very hard to get one of your congressional colleagues who opposes comprehensive reform to be on this program, and we could not. So you should understand that one of the reasons Congressman Gutierrez is uh, generously here for the hour speaking about this issue and has the playing field all to himself is because after a lot of phone calls, we couldn't get somebody on the other side. Is the sentiment changing on the other side of the question on what the political consequences, both the upsides and the blowbacks from this thing could yeah. be? Let me tell you from a political point of view, we don't need 20% of the Republicans to join. I mean, the way this is going to work in the end, and that's why Democrats are so fearful, I think, to a great degree. Um, Let's say it takes 218 votes in the House of Representatives to get something done. Mm, there's 200 Democrats. So really, we only need maybe 25 Republicans to join us. Pretty good odds, right? It's almost like 8 to 1. Uh, but it's difficult to get those 25. In the Senate, it's probably the same thing. I mean, they, they talk about how many votes it's going to take. Well, it takes 60. It really only takes 51. Look, you've got 45 Democrats. So really, what you need is five or six Republicans. And I think what the Republican, and the reason I continue to encourage my Democrats, to say, I call it set the table, right? They said, well, Republicans aren't coming, Luis. I said, invite them to dinner. Send them the menu, right? Tell them the delicious food we're going to serve that day. And announce to everybody that dinner is served and when it's going to be. Maybe then we'll know whether they want to sit down and break bread with us. But if I'm a Republican, I'm kind of going... You guys are in the majority. You guys should, you know, uh, uh, tell us and move the legislation forward. You guys should be the leaders, right? You're the majority. And then I'll come and I'll participate. So we don't know how many of them will. Because I think once you say you're in earnest and serious, as you, you financial services bill, restructuring, notice we're not waiting for the Republicans to join us in the Senate or in the House. Energy policy, we're not waiting for the Republicans to join us. Healthcare, we're not waiting. Uh, if we waited for the Republicans, people would not be getting their unemployment checks right now. Uh, COBRA and healthcare would not have been extended. I mean, the fact is that when Democrats want to do something and they feel it's in their self-interest to do it, they do it, right? And all we're saying that in this case, follow the same model and maybe some of them will come to the table. Because to your question, a lot of them are going to, there's going to be moderate Republicans and those that are forward thinking that are going to say, do we really want to be the minority party of the future destined for the minority for generations to come? Because the immigration debate caused us to really just say to a burgeoning, growing Latino population, I mean, just look, you want to be president of the United States. It's not how many votes you get necessarily, but as we learned from George Bush's election in year 2000, it's the Electoral College. Well, guess what? Arizona, New Mexico, uh, California, Illinois, Florida, all growing. Why? Because they have more and more Latinos, more and more immigrants. We see the shift. Look at Barack Obama. How was he able to change and shift the Electoral College finally in favor of a Democrat? First of all, we didn't have to worry about Florida, right, from a Democratic perspective. Secondly, um, I remember when we almost carried New Mexico in 2004. Well, guess what? We carried it handily this time, and we carried Colorado. We even uh, you know, contested Arizona, even though John McCain was the senator from that state. So if you look, Latinos went from about 8 million participating in 2004 to 10 million participating in 2010. That's a pretty significant increase. But wait a minute, it gets better as those... Uh, commercials on TV always go, it gets better. Just give me a few more seconds. I'm going to make the deal better. Kerry got 63% maybe of the Latino vote. Barack got 70 maybe better. So not only did you get more, but you got more of them. More Latinos voting and more. And that created a situation that allowed Barack Obama to handily win the presidency of the United States. So look, you want to look at the Electoral College and how we're going to decide who the president of the United States is, just look at the demographics. Which is the community that's growing? And you can't stop it. You can pass all the 1070s you want, right? You're not going to stop the growth in Latino population and power. And lastly, I checked with my office on Monday and my staff said, Congressman, we're at 48,900. 
1,100 more, and we will reach 50,000 people who have successfully completed uh, our citizenship program. I said, wow, that's great. It makes me feel proud, you know, of being a congressman and the work. And so we're going to try to do that. But then I said to myself, let me go check. Do you know there are still millions of immigrants, most of them Latino, who are permanent residents, who today can apply to become citizens of the United States, who may have said, ay, pa' qué? I'm happy, I'm older, I'm getting my check, I'm retired. 1070 tells me, go ahead. The last time you saw an uptick in the number of immigrants becoming citizens, huge increase, was when? 1994. 1980, the, uh, the, the uh, Pete Wilson and Proposition 187. Why? Because they said, if you're a citizen, then you don't have to worry. And of course, in 2000, 1996, the Republicans passed some pretty tough immigration policy, which what? Stimulated people. It's the law of unintended consequences.